We're going to play a little bit now with this date and time and customize it, kind of shape it to be exactly what we want a little bit more. It'll also give us a chance to play around with a string and it learn its pieces and what makes it tick. So luckily, if we look at the documentation for C time, we see the format that it gives us the day of the week, month of the year, day of the month, etc. And it's very conveniently been represented so that it has the same number of characters. The day is always three characters long. The month is always three characters long. If you look at the day of the month, it's always two characters long. Wednesday, June 9th, there's two spaces between June and 9 to leave room for the two digit 10, 11, 12, 13 day of the month. So what this means is that the number of characters in this string is going to be the same every single time. And we can count. This is not mysterious. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this whole string is 24 characters long. Each piece of punctuation takes up one character, each space takes up one character, and there's 24 of them all together. Now this is kind of helpful. A string, we don't have to take the whole thing. We can pick and choose what letters we want out of it. So let's say for instance, all we wanted, we're building a clock, all we want is the time. We just want to pull out the time. We assume we know what the day of the week is and what the date is, but we just want to pull the time out of there. So in order to get that, we can use a trick called indexing, where we say, give us this string, but start at a certain position and end at a certain position and only give us those characters. In this case, when we count to find out where the characters relating to the time live, we can see that the very first one is at position 11, and the very last one is at position 19. Remember, this is counting starting from zero. So in Wednesday, June 9th, the capital W is at position zero, the small e is at position one, the small d is at position two, etc. The zero then on 042640, the zero is at position 11, and the zero in 40 is at position 19. To pull out just these characters, we put square brackets after the string variable. So we run our time.ctime function, get date and time back. It's a variable containing a string. Then we can use date and time and put square brackets after it. Not parentheses, square brackets. So that means we're indexing. We're pulling out some of this, but not the whole thing. And to tell it that we only want 11 through 19, we do 11 and a colon and a 20. The colon says, do everything in between these numbers. The 20 is because, possibly frustratingly, Python stops and doesn't include the endpoint. It includes the start point, but not the endpoint. And again, different languages can handle this differently. Doing this has some really nice properties when you go to write code that does the same thing over and over again. And so there's a good reason to do this, but at the beginning, it's very confusing. So please remember when we're expressing a range like this with a value colon value, it doesn't include. So this one will just include 11 up through and including 19. So that'll give us exactly what we want. It'll give us the time. So that's now a new string that we call time only. And we can print that and see what that gives us. And when we run it, we see that that's exactly what happened. We get hour, minute, second. We're getting closer and closer to having something that looks like 
a clock. And I like to sit here and run it over and over again and watch the seconds tick over. <laughs>